Hi, everybody. Um, and I got to start with my thank yous again. This has been a nice week. Thank you to Theodora and David D. And uh, both you guys, multiple, very generous contributions. And thank you, Lejeune. I think you may have contributed once before under a different name, but uh, if not, uh, in any case, thank you. It's, this is so appreciated, and um, it's just uh, encouraging, I guess is the right way to say it, uh, in that uh, you know it's easy to see that we're giving benefit and uh, it's uh, respected. But I only say that because it's from sitting back here, until we get to the live stream, um, it's hard to know except through your words. And uh, of course, all your words are saying the same thing, that you're appreciated. And I, I love that the uh, when you can do it, that you follow up a little bit. Um, for the sake of my, again, I'd like to say my producer, but I think he gets irritated with me for saying that. Uh, I think if there's any profit at all, and I'm not sure there is yet, it would be coming through YouTube. <laughs> so um, anyway, so these things are right now particularly very much appreciated. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but today's uh, conversation uh, is a, it's, it's a lengthy thing. It came from back a ways. And um, we talk about this stuff, relatively speaking, all the time. But this gives me a chance to sort of bring a point home, a very limited point, as you can see. And, um, and I'm going to, because it's a big write up, I'm going to push it all out there in front of my, block my face out. <laughs> just, just read this. Um, J. Robb who uh, somewhere says he's a chemist, uh, a retired chemist. Uh, I forget if he said what kind of a, a chemist, but uh, nevertheless, he's clearly doing painting right now. And he's, he says, a finished painting is just a pile of paint on a surface. You know, that's a, that's a fun thing to say. I remember hearing, uh, was it Tom Wolfe or somebody was talking about, somebody quoting somebody about architecture, that architecture is just a pile of rocks. <laughs> but... Uh, a finished painting is a pile of paint on a surface. If it's just a pile of paint, you wouldn't be struggling so hard to do it. Anyway, so then he says, I don't see why you can't successfully paint an impressionist peach as a single object and then move to a different object in the scene and paint that successfully. Um, yeah, I think one of the reasons that happens, um, that you can't see that, is that you haven't been in the room with somebody who's showing you things uh, about relationships in particular. But uh, we're going to talk about this, uh, this very idea. So he says, the all over the place at once in the start seems highly distracting, uh, especially in a still life with artificial light. The still life is going to be the same tomorrow and none of the shapes or colors or tones are going to change. Once you've set up the still life, you've fixed all the relationships. Finishing one object is not going to change how you paint the other objects because the other objects have already been chosen and placed according to the aesthetic intent. And if you paint them as positioned, you should produce a successful painting. Yeah, so, if you, so his idea is if you paint them just the way they look, one at a time, why isn't it the same thing if you, it, 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 as if you were to set them up um, the way we do, all over the place at once in the start? And so this is a Boston school thing. And, and these guys were raised as just as much you know, doing just as much piecemeal stuff as anybody. You know, the, uh, the, the, the student uh, is inevitably rather that piecemeal guy, and the reason he gives it up is a good one. Uh, now, remember, if you keep a bunch of different things in mind, one of the things you're saying, uh, Rob, is that uh, unity is the part that's going to be, it's going, all this stuff is going to go together just the way it does in the painting if you paint things accurately, meaning if you match this and match that and match the peach, match it, whatever, and you would have the unity of the visual impression. <clears throat> uh, so if that were the case, sight size would actually work. But the reason sight size doesn't work is because of the problem with painting the sun with the yolk of an egg. Um, so I'll just go and show you this uh, tar bell as just an example, and then uh, and you've all seen this with me before. Uh, but it has everything to do with, I'm skipping that one, it has everything to do with keying a painting, right? Uh, keying a painting means you have to get all the elements out there sort of coordinated. And if you're an impressionist, it means more than anything else to have them coordinated. Now, if you know that, you, that you're painting the sun with the yolk of an egg, meaning you're painting the sun with this color value right here, so you know that you, there really is no such thing as this staying in place. It has to be pre-organized. 
And everything that we're talking about in, in, in the start, all over the place at once, I'm sorry, um, um, yeah, all over the place at once in the start, is about keying a painting, getting all the elements, uh, doing the right thing to each other relationally, uh, and particularly having to work around those things that you can't paint literally, matching and matching and matching. And uh, so, you know, you're working as if you were going to give yourself the greatest advantage. So you set up a painting in artificial light, and then you're going to say, now, in artificial light, because it isn't the sun and you're not outdoors, I, sh I might be able to get away with this. Uh, and again, I would ask you, do you really want to have that as your model, right? The one that says that I can, I can get away with this here, but outdoors I got to do something different. But you'll simply find that outdoors and indoors, it's the same thing ultimately. And I keep on saying to you all, and I should have, well, that's why I'll show you this one here. This, this clock here has a direct light from the outdoors coming in and hitting on its lights. And this is a white, this has white edges on it. Even the inside of this thing is white. Now, the guy standing there painting this, which is me, I'm painting on a panel, on a panel, the whiteness of which isn't even as white as this. I mean, as I say, the light on it is such that it can't even begin to approximate the whiteness of this. So we can never actually paint the exact tone. We can't match tones. And so even if I, so I could paint some area of this thing and match. There's a bunch of stuff I could probably match. But the lightest lights have got to remain the lightest lights. If I could match this, this value here, say, being, being as light as my lightest, as, as my canvas could be there, if it could be literally that, uh, this might not even be a, enough of an argument, enough of a, uh, a, a, a I, I could, there's so many other points we could make, let's put it that way. But even if I could match one of these things to my, literally to my canvas sitting over here, and I should have put a little white piece of paper there for you to look at side by side with this. Maybe I should show my, uh, maybe I should show my device here, you know, <laughs> uh, for the, for the photography. Um, but what I want to say, though, is that my canvas, even though it's white, as white as that clock, it's facing, it's, it's the light it's receiving is much dimmer than that clock. And yet I've got to say that what that clock is doing in my setting. I've got to say, let such and such, when I can't get whiter than my canvas, and my white isn't going to have any color in it, and I would actually get darker than my canvas. So you can see I'm setting up with something that isn't true. The white is not actually literally true. We're not matchable, not matchable. So if some part of my painting isn't matchable, and some of them are, where do I wind up? I don't wind up with something that's so easy to, you know, um, say this group, this peach should match over here, and therefore this peach, you know, whatever. Uh, how else can you say that, though? So let's go outdoors again for a second. Let's just take this outdoors. So here's Tarbell standing somewhere. His canvas is presumably, even if it were being hit by sun, it wouldn't make any difference because of the pigments. But but uh, if he's not standing with the sun hitting it, sun hitting his canvas, which is not, it's fairly characteristic for it not to be hitting your canvas. And I found it better outdoors to have it, uh, you're, you're using the blue light above you. To be hitting this white note then, it has the same problem. You can't paint that light outdoors. There's no, can't, no white on our canvas matches that in this, when you're standing in the shadows. And, you know, in the intensity, that is to say the, uh, glow of it can't be matched. And everybody knows that um, the intensity of these uh, very rarely can be matched with our pigments. So it, that's what it all boils down to, though. If you can't match something, what are you going to do? And uh, so you could come back with me with an argument if you want to, Rob, but if, I can, if there's anything I can't match in the canvas, I have to key my painting, which means express the relationship that's, that's, going, to that's going to suggest what we're doing, what, what this big impact uh, is what the big impression is, right? So I have to say, well, let light be X. Let my most chromatic note be this. And those are, this is the most chromatic I can make such and such a green at the value it needs to be in relation to the sky. And this is as light as I can make the sky uh, and still have color in it, which is going to be definitely darker than my white canvas. So there's this little sort of range. We have to get those two things just for starters. Then we can talk about the other end of the canvas where we say, well, let the darks be this. But you have that problem of the big general tonality of the painting. You have to say, well, I could do this with extreme darks and making it look like that. But then I have this problem of the general tonality of the painting of the day not being an inky painting or an inky day. And so now here I am with this, um, with this series of decisions to make. This is my most chromatic note at the light end. This is my lightest light 
something or other is my darkest dark. And now I start living in between those. All the values live in between those. Now, would you be wiser, and this is the great question, to set up all those nodes at the beginning so you can begin to, so you can see what range you're going to live in? Well, that's what the conclusion has been of the Impressionist, uh, by all the Impressionists. They basically concluded that you actually had to see the elements in your painting. Even Sargent put, would put out, they would say, he, he put out spots of paint to look at, and gradually he brought them to drawing. And that model is, once you get to color, that model seems to be inevitable. Once you start saying, I've got to actually have the range of chromatic notes in relation to each other, and all that sort of thing, it changes everything. So, yeah, you can live in that world that says, if I can just copy the drawing, uh, you know, why wouldn't it be the same? Or you can say, I painted this peach, and I can just use the peach for all my touchstones. But you're going to get to a problem having painted that peach with certain other things that won't work, because that peach maybe isn't as rich as something else in the picture. And you've used up all that richness, and now you have nothing to work with. That kind of thing is what's going to happen to you. So this doesn't have to be a long discussion, but my, my overall conclusion is one of a guy who painted the other way. And uh, when you want the, 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 the majesty and the mystery of the, of the incorporated world, all the elements playing together, you'll find best practices says, get them all playing together. And the easiest way to do it is to put color spots out there and get them all in a conversation together. And then begin to do that same thing with the interplay of, uh, of, the, uh, of the drawing players, shall we say, the spatial relator, the spatial elements that, that, that cause shape and all that. Um, so, um, and what was the last thing I wanted to say about that? So then what happens once you get into my world, though, and this is the reason you never give it up once you've been there, is you start realizing that, that a painting like this, or a representational painting, an impressionist painting, is more than the sum of each of these parts stuck together. It's actually much more than that. And what's happening is when you start playing relational games and you're sitting there putting down the peachy orange and getting it right to this this piece of drapery in the background to that, to that table uh, uh, brown, shall we say, you begin to realize something as interesting is happening, and it's called the music. And I'm going to go ahead and get to that <laughs> very soon, Carol, the question of what, <laughs> what led me to the music. But that's one of those things that makes you realize, you know what, I'd never give this up again. Because the relationships of things is what makes the beauty. And so you're having these discussions with uh, Degas and all sorts of different people. This is the game you're starting to play. You begin to realize that there is no, even the shape-making stuff is an abstract problem. It's not a realism problem. So the two problems with the Rob approach is that you have the world of realism is now driving everything. And uh, I mean, like, including the idea of what painting is as an art form. And that's a, that's a dramatic mistake because realism has never been the art form. It's historically been called an art of color. Or, or the art of color. It's much like the art of sound. This is a different game once you get into, once you get to the, to the, to the real bottom line, shall we say, of painting. So that's what I have to sell. Uh, you have to keep working it out for yourself and finding out whether I'm crazy or not. And uh, but I encourage you all to just keep on exploring it and asking that question: Why would I do all over the place at once when I can just paint a peach? Go try it. Uh, you'll find that your experience will convince you otherwise. So. Um, Let's see if I can look at the other painting. You know, as I was saying before, you know, your color scheme is one of those things. Uh, you may say, I'm looking at this thing. I've said that many times looking at a painting myself. When I, I can look at this still life. I think I have a really nice still life. But until I put it down as color, I can't actually... You can, you can guess, and you can guess better and better with experience. But I found that when I saw the thing two-dimensionally, I had a way better idea of whether it was a beautiful picture or not. It's because there's some transference that goes on there. And that's a question for another day, though, the idea of whether you can see that visual world as if it were just a flat, beautiful phenomena, you know. Uh, but the interrelationships, all that sort of stuff, I find that when I get it on the two-dimensional plane and I can see all the places dancing together, I begin to be more objective about that, about the abstractions and the way the game is played. So at that point, you could say, looking at a picture like this, you could say, do I see what the color scheme is? Do I see the interplay of things and how that how that, how that uh, is, is forming a bit of ideally of music. You know, in this one, you could just look at things like, just say the gold play, see that, that all these guys here, and all, all the variations in gold that happen throughout this painting. You know, and, and you're watching as you're painting, when you're trying to hit these notes, when you're trying to figure out what this is, because you're, because you're aware that it's rather like this, and it's another version of say that, or this, or any place, if you begin to realize, say, that something like this might be the more chromatic version of that same thing, you begin to realize something is happening in painting 
that's just needs to be explored, right? And you're never going to have that exploratory opportunity if you paint all these objects. By the time you get all done, then you have that first shot at seeing what the big impression is and whether you've achieved it. And you think that you will have achieved it by doing what essentially is sight size or the, or the matching, the matching, 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 matching. And I challenge you to go keep doing it, keep doing what you're doing if you like, but, um, but uh, uh, consider the other ways. And, and one of the things about what I'm suggesting is if you haven't explored Impressionism, that is say on its own terms, you don't really know what the difference is and you, and you don't really live in the same place. So I just encourage you to explore it. And it's not the same thing as saying, you know, if you haven't committed sins, you don't know what sin is. <laughs> it's not, that's not even a little what I'm saying. I'm saying there's thing, there are things that are happening here in this, in this world. <laughs> in this, in this uh, little color world, that are uh, not available to the guy who thinks as a realist does, who thinks objects and coloring in objects, and that painting is the guy who can do it with the most realism, uh, or even with the most realism and, and and plus having things that go together and belong in the same picture together. Uh, something different happens. Otherwise, you wouldn't have seen the entire migration away from the old way of working the piecemeal way of working of the, of the academies. Uh, but the reason is that there's something bigger, the unities, the, 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 the unities of the abstractions and the interplay of the abstractions become your bailiwick, they become this, this moment in the sun for you to truly explore and have a chance to win, shall we say, at the game of beauty. Okay, so if you, if you stay on the track with the idea that the interrelationships of things are more than what the interrelationships of what's in an object, but it's the interrelationships of things before that, and if you understand the idea of, of, uh, 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 of uh, the, the, the interplay of all the elements of an object having to, be, uh, having to be keyed, having to be set up and seen in relationships, you can see what world you can live in, but if you haven't if you haven't experienced that, you don't know what I mean. And you're trying to, you're, I would suggest you're probably trying to do a shortcut. And of course, there's nothing wrong with efficiency. So take all the shortcuts you want, but make sure that you actually get to the place you're trying to go. Okay. All right. Let's. I hope that does it. I mean, with, taken with a bunch of the other things I've said about on this subject, I think you might uh, you might start coming around to what I'm saying and, and and be willing to work it out and explore it. All right. Well, good. Uh, in that case, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, by the way, that was a really nice thing we had the other day. This, this, uh, the, the live stream was really nice. The, the attendance was nice. The comments were great. And uh, uh, I really do look forward to doing that again. We're talking about doing it maybe more regularly, maybe every six weeks or something like that, instead of, instead of basing it on the um, evolution of the subscriber list. But uh, so stay tuned and... Uh, uh, in the meantime, go ahead and bring your questions. Send them to me. You can send them to me by email. You can send them to me by um, on the under these under these uh, you know the comment section under these uh, videos. So and I some of those I reply to. So if you haven't looked at replies, you might want to do that. A number of them are, are fairly interesting, including I think I replied to um, to Rob under there. So you might look under his, which I've now forgotten what day or anything it would happen. So all right, all right. On that note, um, see you next time, and up. Have a great painting week.